confident of their appearance and they have this like outer shell that is very, very like impenetrable, especially to a guy who fawns over them, gives them physical compliments, that kind of a thing. However, on a deep level, there's usually a lot of insecurity, right? So the goal with these kind of girls, you need to be high enough value to get into their world, right? You need to be perceived as um, someone who has his life together, has success, whatever. Also, um, sometimes cool, popular douchebag success can get you there as well, right? But you need to get in the door. But once you are in the door, the key to these kind of girls is to find something about them besides their looks that you like. And the other key to these girls, and this is super, super, super important, is to never, ever, ever get pushed around by their frame. Because they are so, so, so used to using guys for money, using guys for favors, using guys for whatever, that as soon as you show that they can manipulate you or use you that way, you're being put in the category with all the marks, right? And by mark, I mean a guy they take advantage of, I don't mean a guy named Mark, right? Um, but that you're getting put in the, the category of the guys that they use, and as soon as you're in that category, the entire dynamic of the relationship will change. So you have to be very, very careful of anything along those lines, anything along that frame, right? So um, that's, that's kind of how you deal with those kind of girls. The other thing that's really useful with those kind of girls, if you want to cheat code for those girls, it's know their world, okay? If you know their world, if you say a girl's a model and you know photography terms, that's gonna buy you massive points in her world because she's associating with someone who has high value in that world. <clears throat> or if you happen to know um, words that go along with like casting and acting and hiring, hiring of actresses, that puts you in the like director producer role or that you know directors and producers, that's gonna make them think you have value in their world. So little things like that that you can do that show you know their world. Um, for, for example, like um, strippers, if you can do things that indicate you've dated strippers before, that can do that sort of thing. So indicating you know their world is a nice little cheat code for that type of a girl. Make sense? All right, um, next girl. Um, we'll do the, we talked about her a little bit earlier. But um, the immigrant girl, first generation college, right? So she comes from a foreign country, pretty, worked hard her whole life, went to college. That's kind of where she's at now. Maybe, she, maybe she's in a job just after college, maybe she's still in college. Let's talk about that girl. All right, so this girl, uh, we talked about a little bit. What's she looking for in terms of a guy and a job? Right? She's looking for the guy who played by the rules and is successful by the rules. Okay? Probably, um, you have to think, this, this girl's parents were probably very, very risk averse. Okay? First generation in the country, probably did not have a lot of money, but they worked hard because they, they got her educated, got her through college. Um, they probably, like, very, there's a guess, not always but usually a very hardworking, blue collar type of work ethic, right? If you um, act too like financially arrogant, that may be a big turnoff for her, right? If you act like, if you, if you say things that are demeaning towards people that like work hard but don't have the most prestigious jobs, maybe an immediate turnoff for her, right? I mean like there's a good chance, this is like, like racist in a way, but there's a good chance that like if you make fun of someone for having a low-end job, there's a good chance her parents or her uncle or her aunt had that job because they probably came to this country with nothing and they either had that job or something similar to it. There's a good chance. So be very careful with that kind of stuff, right? Whereas there's other types of girls where if you try to convey value, you might convey that you're rich, successful, entrepreneur, that kind of stuff. You might even like do a little dickhead douchebag type stuff. Um, so you want to avoid that, all right? You want to understand hardworking, blue collar, um, and tends to play by the rules. All right, um, things like little things, like here's a little thing, right? Taking something and putting it in a recycling bin instead of a trash bin. She'd probably appreciate that, right? Crazy, right? But it's just a little thing, right? But it shows like you play by the rules, you care, you're bought into things, whatever. Um, with anything that you have that seems irresponsible, you wanna make it seem like you have your life together and it is responsible, right? With anything you have, that is um, a little bit out there or wacky or overly avant-garde or artistic, you wanna ground that onto very basic reality. Like for example, if you were an artist, you'd wanna explain how you work so hard in art school and you wanna explain how like, art can be a real career. Now you don't wanna justify it and be too try hard, but you do wanna make sure that that's conveyed, okay? 
Um, because again, this girl's gonna have a blueprint that is, is very much that. Um, typically, um, also if you can talk about like where you've struggled and succeeded at something, that'll work really, really well for you. And ideally, if you can be playing by the rules, but doing just a little better. That's the, the image you'd like to convey to this type of a girl. Um, this type of a girl typically will again be one that you'll wanna be a little patient with in terms of like sleeping with her. Um, that there are exceptions for sure. But again, she's used to playing by the rules and so she's very likely to have rules. The rules have served her well, okay? Um, but cheat code to this type of girl is if you do have an area of expertise that is outside of the mainstream, once you have conveyed that you have your shit together within the mainstream, really show her that area of expertise. Like actually use that as like this, this way to blow her mind, as a way to be like, this is what's possible in the world, or this is what's outside of the reality, you know. But that only makes sense and only works once you've shown you can exist and work within the reality as well. She's not gonna be interested in someone who's outside the reality without being in it. That makes sense? Yeah. Cool. Oh, cool, cool. Um, so these are some, some common blueprints. Um, obviously, this is a, these are all very like stereotypical and they're all like very surface, right? Any particular girl, may have elements of 10 different blueprints, right? Um, and say, for example, like the, the first generation immigrant girl may also be like an athlete, right? If that's the case, the athletic girl stereotype would go in there too. Or she may also um, be like a very girly girl and like very into fashion, that would be another stereotype you throw in. So there's, there's, like stere there, there's, there's different layers on top of layers and you can always be figuring it out. But the key idea here is the idea that the way that you're gonna be most effective in dealing with girls in general, or dealing with girls, is to calibrate to the specific girl and to truly try and understand where she's coming from. What is value to her? How can you convey it? What is she looking for? Um, what would, what does her ideal life look like? And what is she afraid of, right, in terms of guys? If you understand the answers to those questions, you're gonna know how to best convey yourself. Um, and little caveat to this, I do not recommend lying. I really, really, really do not recommend lying. Um, because one, why, why the fuck would you do it? But two, if you do get caught in a lie, it, it will destroy so, so, so much trust. Getting caught in one lie with a girl will undo like all the work you've done to build comfort, build integrity, build a connection, right? So just avoid it. Don't overtly lie. However, every one of us has probably 30 different facets to our personality and we are different people around different groups of friends. Right? So that said, there's nothing wrong or nothing um, unethical in any way about being the type, the, the part of yourself that's most conducive to that particular girl. Um, the other thing I will say too is um, a lot of people with this idea of blueprints might get the impression that you're like bending over backwards or changing everything about yourself for the girl. Um, not the case, number one, because it's taking from your own sort of unique characteristics but also because um, there's this idea, it's an NLP idea, it's called pacing and leading, which is you start with her blueprint or grounding onto her reality and you build from there out to your reality, okay? So the idea of pacing and leading, just to give you an example, would be um, if I were to make, say I was gonna argue that we should be friends or that we're close or something with you, right? I would start with things that you know are true and I take that and I'm gonna build on it. So I'd be like, you and I were both people, right? We're both human beings. Right? So human beings, um, that means like human beings are mammals. So that means like we were born helpless. It's crazy to think about, right? That means you and I, neither one of us would even be alive if like we hadn't been taken care of as a kid. Right? And so actually, the very fact that you and I are here in this room means we both have this capacity for love. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And I think it's cool that we can like, like each other and like, you know, have a, have a good relationship together. I think that's, that's a very positive thing, even, if, even though we haven't known each other that long. That makes sense? <laughs> Okay, so that's, that's the very brief, that's, that's kind of like a you know, thrown together example, pacing and leading. I take things that she knows are true, or he knows are true um, in this case, and then I can build an argument on it, I can build a case on it. In the case of a girl, um, end of the day, if you have a good positive lifestyle to bring her into, the best way that you can have a healthy, good relationship with that girl is to bring her into your lifestyle and to make her part of it. But that said, there's nothing wrong with going to her life and relating to her in order to show her what your life is and to show her what's on offer. Does that make sense? So end of the day, um, even if it'd be nice to be like, jam her into your frame, 
a lot easier way to do it is softly by taking her existing frame, her existing view of the world, and showing her how she can open that up and have new understandings within it. All right? So I think that's um, a good way to understand Blueprint, which is it's sort of this bridge that allows you and her to relate in the best possible way so that you can create a life that's shared and together. It's not you trying to like trick and manipulate her into some, being something you're not, and it's certainly you not, ch it's not you changing to be the type of guy for her. Does that make sense? Cool. Um, so that's my, that's my spiel on Blueprint. Um, I will take some questions in that area. I'm sure there, there are probably a few. Yeah. Okay, so like the idea is that we can observe the different Blueprints and kind of act accordingly, right? Mm -hmm. If girls are doing the same, so for example, a girl is clearly actually like the first generation immigrant type, mm -hmm. but she wants to appear as the LA type. Mm -hmm. It's totally not, doesn't have guys picking her up in helicopters, which is guys like, got guys complimenting her on Facebook, whatever. Mm -hmm. But she exists like in that world in her mind. Mm -hmm. Go to that, or go to what she is, go to both. I would just call it out. Yeah. I would call it out perfectly, right? Because if you, if you understand her that well, that's great. Right, so what you could you could do a few different things. You could you could call it early on if you wanted to like tease her. You could be like you're trying to be this, but you're this. That's a little abrasive, but it could work. Um, what you could do though is because you know that she is that LA type, but you also or she wants to be that LA type, but she's also the the very grounded. Um, you could tell stories about friends of yours you've known who started out in a very grounded blue collar way and grew to have this kind of stuff, and you could suggest that you know. She should like she should dream high and that kind of stuff and suggest that you know people who have and like encourage her, but kind of obliquely you're saying your ticket to that life is right here, right? Um, so that there's things like that you can do. But yeah, the more you understand, that's that's a great that's a great type of understanding to have is she is this, but she'd want to be that, right? Um, one type of girl that I do really really well with is the type of girl that really wishes like she's she's the good student and she's smart, but she really wishes she was like a genius, right? She wishes she was really really smart. Um, and so I'm the, the guy that is probably a little smarter than her. Um, but I, I understand her need to be smart, and so I can, I can challenge her intellectually and show her that she's kind of not there, but then I can also appreciate when she's trying and appreciate the things she does well. And the fact that I give her that, um, that reinforcement, I give her reward for like, when she does do things well, she really appreciates it, and it's, it's, it's um, very validating for her, and she'll chase, right? And, and she'll, she'll enjoy the experience as well. So yeah, that's a great thing. If you know almost better than knowing what someone is, if you know what they want to be, that's great information. And that's, that's very, very, very useful. And um, use, use responsibly, right? Don't like dupe the girl and be like, I can do that. Don't be like the guy that's like, the fake movie producers, like I can hook you up in this way. Instead be like, you know, here's what is possible to you. And here's, I can teach you at least to some degree how to get closer to that. And then give legitimate value. Don't be the guy that like promises like duping value and doesn't give anything. But to the extent that you have that available, by all means. By all means, yeah. Uh-huh. Do you find whether or not she had a strict dad mm -hmm. uh, being one of the stronger blueprints? Um, yeah, a lot of girls, um, I, I, don't, I, I haven't gone in so much the psychology of daddy issues and this and that. <laughs> but um, a, lot of, a lot of girls do respond very, very strongly to men who have either characteristics very similar to the dad or characteristics diametrically different than their dad, one or the other, right? Um, and so if she had a very strict dad, um, there's a couple different possibilities, right? Just off the top of my head. Um, one possibility is that she wants you to kind of like lead strongly and like be that strong ma male role in her life, especially if she says she's very close with her dad, right? That might work really, really well. There's also the chance that if she had the very strong, strict dad that she like, she hated it and rebelled against it a bit and she wants that freedom and she wants a guy that can show her like a world without a lot of limitation. So, it's, it's possible either way, but it's certainly information that I would think um, is useful in context of other information. Another question I might ask if I knew that is I might try and like suss out what the type of personality of her boyfriends in the past has been. Because yeah. if you notice that she's a strict dad and then she has like very domineering boyfriends too, that's a pretty clear blueprint. Or if she has strict dad and then she's like dated a bunch of criminals, right? <laughs> you know that maybe she's like rebelling and like partying and like that kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'd look at other factors as well, yeah. yeah. Can I ask another quick question? You mentioned the uh, skin color as a blueprint. Can you huh? mention, I don't know, if there's a spectrum on that and how it affects... Sure, I mean, well, let's, let's look at um, this most politically correct, incorrect, incorrect. Yeah, this okay. Yeah, no, no it's, it's very valid. Um, so in this country, for example, um, white people are treated differently than black people, are treated differently than Asian people, are treated differently than Latino people. 
right? It just is the case, right? Typically, the stereotype is that, um, let's see, black people versus white people. They say black people have more rhythm. They're like a little cooler, probably socioeconomically not coming from, in general, as high of a place, that kind of stuff, right? Um, probably more, the other stereotype, more athletic, I guess. That's another stereotype. So all those stereotypes, all those stereotypes kind of play into things. Um, and so the girl grew up in, in various environments, right? Here's, here's actually a funny one. Um, happen, I happen to know this through other sources. Do you know who the, the hardest, who, who in this country is females? has the hardest time finding good men? Black females. Black females, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, uh, actually black females that are somewhat successful in their jobs, mm -hmm. right? Because they have, they have a hard time finding um, people that are of the same socioeconomic place as they are who are looking for them in a weird way just because of the way the socioeconomics have it all boiled down. So they're in like a very weird place. And if you happen to know that, then you can know like, how that's all gonna break down, right? Um, also, a lot of that stuff is gonna come to culture. So if, um, if a girl comes, like if, say a girl's Indian, right? Um, a lot of Indians come from a very traditional culture, right? So traditional culture, they're probably gonna wait longer before having sex, right? Most of the time, they come from culture of arranged marriages. Um, sometimes. Sometimes they're going to, cer certain, certain ones, they'll, they'll view a bigger value gap from other cultures because of the way they're treated culturally. So that can play in. There's a lot of different variations on that. Um, but um, it certainly, it, it plays into the whole tapestry of who they are, right? A lot of also um, Indian culture, a lot of Indians grew up being encouraged to be doctor, lawyer, engineer, that kind of stuff. And so there's gonna be a lot of, a lot of that kind of push in an Indian person, more so typically than like a white person, yeah. right? Um, I think Asians have that same kind of like doctor, lawyer, engineer push. Um, parentally a little bit, that kind of stuff. Um, so I wouldn't say there's like one global like, if they're black, treat them this way. If they're Mexican, treat them. It's not like that. That's, that's just like, that's just fucking racism, all right? But what I would say is consider their skin color in terms of what their socioeconomic background likely was. And also you can ask and find out, right? Um, in terms of what their parents wanted for them, what struggles their parents had. And then also with respect to how they were treated by people growing up. Right? A lot of times people that are like black, Mexican, um, uh, so sometimes Asian, whatever, they're like discriminated against or made fun of growing up or given a harder time of it growing up. And so that can factor into their blueprint as well. Right? Whereas a lot of times like white people like me were boring because like we didn't have to go through like the bullshit growing up. Right? So we don't have as many cool stories as like, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just one piece of the tapestry, but it certainly is a piece. Like people, like in the same way that that a lot of people treat a certain girl different because she's hotter or less hot. Certain people, um, because, of, because there are racist people in the world and because there are people that view certain culture in certain ways, will treat a black person differently than a white person and that's been part of their experience before they got to you. So because it's part of their experience in getting to know them, it's important to understand that part of their experience. That make sense? Yeah. Yeah, all right. I don't want to sound too like red pillish because I don't really like that okay. idea, but like uh -huh. hypergamy is a big, subject with psychology. So like, how would you go about, you know, finding someone's bl like blueprint if she has a slightly higher perceived value? M maybe it's like a slightly higher paying job, maybe slightly higher social status. So like. So you're talking about like, how would I adjust to a girl that is like a very career oriented, very yeah, serious, exactly. yeah. 80 hour a week New York type? Exactly. Okay. Um, so that type of a girl, there's, there's probably a few different blueprints within that. Um, so I would say in the same way that you asked the strict dad question, the whole like very hardworking career woman question, I think there's probably a few categories. Um, but what's going to happen, excuse me, is they'll fall into one or the other without being so many in the middle. Okay. So, excuse me, a lot of the like hardcore career women are likely to be of the type of, I'll pay for myself, I can handle myself, I don't need a man for that, that kind of stuff. And those type of, those type of girls oftentimes have a little bit of feminism even in them. Not always, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Um, but that category of girl, I tend to let talk more. And I tend to like, if you, if you let, they, because they're used to taking a lead more than other girls usually are, a lot of times I'll sit back and let them lead their way into bed, okay? So that can be the case. The diametric opposite of that though, is the girl that's been, doing so much of the career stuff that she just had, she's never treated like a woman and she just wants someone to actually treat her 
just deeply like a female and forget she's the boss for a while. So that's a different blueprint. And it's very like opposite, right? But um, the more extreme someone's personality is in general, or the more extreme their circumstances, the more extreme their reaction to it's likely to have been, right? So they're likely to not fall into the middle camp, but to fall closer towards like kind of the tails of the distribution. If that makes sense. Yeah. Would you still try to? Uh, would you try to like justify your career and stuff with people like that, or would you play more of like the cool guy, just, like nonchalant, like? Um, not necessarily playing into their, like if they're very successful. Okay, so I would try and, in a perfect world, if I wasn't asked until I had information about them, I'd try and find out what they, how they actually define success. All right, is success to them making a contribution? Is success to them financial? Is success to them like having a lot of people follow you and care about what you're doing, what it, like having prestige, right? Um, and then I would convey those aspects of my job. So if success to them is money, but it's not necessarily like working like a dog for money, Right? and they work an 80 hour a week, I might play it up as I'm, I figured out a way, like I have good money, I have a good life, but like I do it on my own, I don't have to work 80 hours a week. So I'm still within their blueprint of what they value, but it's just like a little higher. Right? If it's like a contribution thing, I might play up the fact that I teach and educate and help people. Right? If it's the like prestige thing, I might play up the fact that like, you know, I have viewers and that kind of stuff. Right? There's, there's different ways that, that it can be treated, but I try and go, that's actually a really, um, that's actually a really, really, really good point on this. Um, have you guys ever heard of like means values versus ends values? Do you guys know this? Yeah. Anyone who knows NLP probably has heard this. Anyone who knows like goes deep in like Tony Robbins stuff may have heard this type of stuff. Um, but means values versus end values, right? So um, a lot of guy, a lot of girls have like a stereotype, like online dating, right? They have the stereotype of I want a guy who's like over five eleven or over six feet or whatever, right? That's a means value. That's like a specific, tangible thing, right? Now, on my online profiles, I put that I'm 5'10". I'm actually like a little under 5'8", probably, right? Right around 5'8", let's say, right? That said, I show up for the dates. I've never had a complaint. I end up taking home like 85, 90% of like the dates I go on, right? Something like that. Um, and they don't seem to have a problem with the fact that I'm under their like height criteria, right? So did I, was I, did I, did I dupe them by like putting the wrong, the wrong height? Maybe a little bit. I got the date because of it, right? Or I got like at least in their search parameters because of it. Um, but the means value is I want a guy who's six feet tall. But for certain girls, I want a guy who's six feet tall because that's my paradigm of successful. I want a guy who's six feet tall because um, I want a guy who I feel is strong and can take care of me, right? Um, I want a guy who's six feet tall because um, like when a, a guy like touches me, it feels better if he's bigger. But that said, if, if I just know how to touch girls in general, maybe I feel even better than that guy. Does that make sense? So instead of thinking what's the, the, the thing that they specifically think they're looking for, what you want to ask is why are they looking for it? What is the reason underlying, right? So when you ask the girl that's like the career woman or the girl that has like these different things going on in her life, ask not what is the, the literal fact of the life, but ask what is she striving for with it? What is her goal out of it? What's she trying to achieve with it? Or where is she coming from with it, right? Get to the underlying reason and, and calibrate and cater to the underlying reason rather than the surface reason, if at all possible. So, so what do you do if you get like this like super hot girl, but she likes like people who like, just like, oh, like you got a small two, like, okay, so what do you, <laughs> she likes people who like, uh, like say like, like bring her down and like say like bad things to her. Um, Cause like I, I did, like I've met a bunch of girls who like mm -hmm. that, but I always feel like bad, mm -hmm. like doing like demeaning stuff or something like that. Right. Um, so two things I would say on that. One is um, the means value end value thing. Ask what she gets out of that. Right. What is it that she gets out of having guys tell her bad things about herself? Right. Is it that it reaffirms her self perception that makes her feel comfortable and trust them? Mm -hmm. Possibly. Is it that the fact that they put her down makes her feel like they're high value guys? So what she just wants is like a guy who she sees as really high value? Yeah. So ask, ask why. Ask the reason why. Um, the second thing I would say to you is I do disagree with like cutting the girl down as a blueprint and like damaging her self-esteem and whatnot. <clears throat> that said, um, if the way to get her to like you, um, assuming that you're giving her something positive and a good healthy relationship on the back end of it, involves a little bit of pushing away and a little bit of being difficult with her, um, I'm not entirely opposed to it as long as you're providing value on the back end and hopefully like whatever you tore down, you're building up many, many, many times over and that's your goal. Um, because if it's not you, it'll be a guy who actually is tearing down her self-esteem and actually doing bad things with her. Does that make sense? So if, if that is her blueprint a little bit, um, 
if you, the other, the other option, by the way, is just don't date girls like that, yeah. right? Because that might be unhealthy. That's another thing, too. But if you are going to date a girl like that, and that is her blueprint, and is the, that is the way into a relationship, fine to an extent, but make sure that you're not doing real damage and make sure that you're being a positive influence. Again, it's that pacing and leading thing, right? You get onto their reality, which is that they're whatever they feel, have low self-esteem or whatever, and then your reality is positive, high self-esteem reality. If you can bring her up either to that reality or in that direction, you've done her a massive service. So it's like the net. <clears throat> it's kind of the net. Now, do, do be careful. Like, don't, don't take what I just said as like, <laughs> It's like the end justifies the means. I'll be nice to her later. Ten years from now, I'll be nice. Don't don't do that, okay? Like don't don't go that route. Um, but do understand that like <clears throat> whatever the girl's blueprint, even if it doesn't make total sense to you, if it does give her pleasure and give her a positive life experience, like certain girls want to be tied up and whipped. Yeah. Like maybe to you that's demeaning them, but maybe they just enjoy it, right? Yeah. So don't don't judge their blueprint beyond the extreme. Mm -hmm. Like if they're like if you're doing actual real damage to her, yeah, don't don't do that, right? <laughs> but like. Don't be so judgmental and understand pacing and leading and that you can, you can bring them um, in a positive direction from there as well. Okay. But my actual answer to that for me personally would be I just wouldn't date girls like that oh. because I don't want to go to that place. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's another personal choice. Okay. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's kind of the time we have. Do we have time if I want to take questions from them afterwards a little bit? Hanging around or no? Yeah? Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I'll either hang around here and take a few more questions and talk to you guys, or I'll like either go outside maybe, and as long as we can stand the frigid like New York <laughs> winter, uh, I'll take a few questions as well. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the talk. I thank you guys for coming out. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.